I'm Aaron Porras, and thank you for joining us from our studios in Israel. Coming up in today's newscast, a horrific explosion kills three in Jaffa, Tel Aviv. The IDF unleashes the Iron Dome defense system for Israeli waters, and President Rivlin extends Prince Harry and Meghan Markle a very royal honeymoon invitation. Stay tuned for the latest news in Israel. Three people are dead and another is seriously injured following a massive explosion in Yafo, Tel Aviv. A building collapsed into a literal ball of flames following the explosion last night, which Israelis even as far as northern Tel Aviv could hear, wondering if a terror attack had just taken place. Take a look at this horrific footage taken from the scene. Police are saying that the explosion was caused not by terrorism, but by an illegal gas cylinder that had been attached to the building without required safety measures and inspections. And it turns out that the paint store itself wasn't properly registered in the first place either, nor did it meet fire codes for businesses that contain highly flammable materials like paint. At this time, two of the deceased victims have been identified as Raymond Huri of Jaffa and Ali Abu Jama of Taibe. A controversial new bill has just cleared a major hurdle and may very well soon become Israeli law. The law would outlaw police from recommending criminal indictments to the attorney general on any current and future investigations, but here's the issue. It's largely seen as a move by the government to protect Prime Minister Netanyahu from multiple corruption charges of his own. The Ministerial Committee for Legislation passed the bill after weeks of fierce debate. Proponents defend the move as a reasonable measure to protect the reputation of citizens who are eventually found innocent in court. But given the bill's unusually speedy push through the Knesset at a time when Netanyahu himself is facing multiple criminal investigations of alleged corruption, critics blast it as an obvious attempt to protect Netanyahu from possible fallout of criminal indictments. A member of Netanyahu's Likud party actually proposed amending the bill to apply to only future cases and exclude Netanyahu's current affairs. The party responded by removing him from the committee and replacing him with one of Netanyahu's closest confidants. Another part of the bill being fiercely debated is that it blocks investigators from revealing the results of their investigations, even if they believe criminal activity did indeed occur. It also jails police who share this information with the public. The bill needs further votes before it becomes a law, but given its momentum so far, many believe that's very likely to happen. All hands on deck, because the latest Israeli military breakthrough takes place on the high seas. The IDF has just successfully tested its brand new naval Iron Dome system, which means Navy ships can now expand Israel's cutting edge defense from the land all the way to the sea. Simulated several scenarios of rockets fire from shore to sea. The system detected the relevant threats and successfully intercepted them. The IDF has just declared its naval Iron Dome fully operational, ready to go at a moment's notice. Israel's revolutionary defense system intercepts enemy rockets in midair before they even reach their targets, a concept the IDF has now adapted to its naval fleet. The Army installed the system into one of its ships, equipped, equipped it with an Iron Dome launcher, and overhauled the vessel's radar to integrate the two. And now in the final field test, the ship was able to successfully destroy multiple barrages of rockets, making the project a massive success. What's more, reports indicate that this is just the beginning. The Ministry of Defense will continue to develop and upgrade the system capabilities in order to deal with additional fronts, arena, and relevant threats. It might sound strange at first, but Israeli waters may very well become a critical new front line in future wars. That's because Israel has become increasingly dependent on offshore gas rigs, and given that Hezbollah has reportedly acquired more accurate long-range missiles, these will likely be valuable targets to protect. Israel completed a major upgrade of the Iron Dome system earlier this year, and now the shield extends all the way out to sea. Women of the IDF are about to shatter the glass ceiling, and that's because next week, the Army's very first unit of female tank operators is finishing their training and then reporting for duty to guard Israel's southern border. Right now, 13 awesome ladies are in the home stretch to complete the Army's first ever pilot program for female tank combat operators. This is a grueling course to pass that requires intense physical and mental strength. 
But it just goes to show that the ladies of the IDF have just as much of the right stuff as their male counterparts. Once the course is complete, the program enters its final phase by placing the girls-only tank unit on active duty to patrol Israel's southern border. Though this is a combat position, this unit will not actually be sent into enemy territory should a war ever break out, merely defend Israel's border from enemy invaders. The program, however, has drawn controversy from former and current military leaders who say that having women serve in this critical combat role somehow diminishes the strong face of the army. Many have even personally appealed to Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman, asking him to end female combat service altogether, arguing that it lowers the army's standards. Those accusations have been largely debunked, though, and most are celebrating what they see as a long overdue initiative to finally give women their equal rights to serve the same as men. So for anyone who believes that old stereotype that women can't drive, I guess you've never seen a woman behind the wheel of a tank. All right, now, athletes from foreign Islamic nations, like Iran, are forbidden from playing against Israeli challengers in competitions. Normally, the athlete simply forfeits the match, but now an Iranian wrestler just intentionally threw a match so that he wouldn't have to wrestle an Israeli opponent. That wrestler in the blue is Iranian athlete Ali Reza Karimi Mashiani. And as you can see, his match against his Russian challenger started off very strong, until Karimi Mashiami's coach shouted at him to lose, prompting one of Iran's top wrestlers to apparently completely give up, forfeiting his shot for a gold medal at this year's World Championship. And the reason why? Because if he won the match against Russia, his next opponent would have been from one of Iran's great Satan countries, Israel. The Islamic regime of Iran has consistently forbidden its athletes from any kind of sportsmanship with Israel and is calling Karimi Mashiani's sacrifice a, quote, heroic action for the country. In fact, the last time an Iranian athlete officially represented the Islamic regime in a match against Israel was in 1983. But the Iranian public is a little more critical. Many say that if Israel is an enemy, then why shouldn't Iranian athletes step up to defeat them? One user even tweeted, quote, Do the authorities not say that Israel is evil? Instead of running away, let us rise up and fight and defeat them. End quote. Who knows what the results of the Iranian-Israeli match would have been. But while Iran intentionally threw away its chances, Israel placed third overall in the world. Today's kids are growing up on digital platforms. And sometimes it feels like it's impossible to get kids to keep their eyes off of all those screens that, the, uh, that accompany them. Well, a new Israeli company is now trying to change the way children use their iPhones, iPads, and tablets by turning them into learning tools. Joining us now is Galia Halawi, the co-founder and managing director of A Plus Kids. And how are you? Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for inviting me. My pleasure. All right, so my first question is, you know, what does A Plus Kids do exactly? So A Plus Kids is actually offering um, a personalized AI digital uh, tutor for kids age four to eight. Um, offering them videos integrated with um, interactive games that actually is using an algorithm-based curriculum and big data analysis, and all of that to teach them English, math, science, and facts of life. So this AI, this artificial intelligence algorithm, it, it targets the needs of that specific user? Exactly, to the level that they uh, manage to progress according to their age group, according to the subject that their wow. parents uh, put into the system that they want their kids to specialize in. And how, ma how many subjects, I mean, you just mentioned a few, are those all the subjects that are offered in the platform? Um, it's very general, like teaching English or right. math or uh, science or facts of life, like sure. art or geography. Mm -hmm. It's very um, wow. wide. So. Any like home economics or arts or crafts I or anything that like that? We're actually giving them the basics they need in order to get the better achievements in the first years at school. And we now know that in the future, it will help them to be even better than, you know, their other peers at, at school. Incredible. So how, how did you come up with this idea? Um, my, uh, my background is from establishing preschool channels. Mm -hmm. uh, so I knew all the content that was out there worldwide. And I didn't wow. understand that technology has to offer much more than sure. kids are using today. So with A+, we're actually integrating technology with the content kids mm. love to watch and giving them the tools to progress in the okay. best way they can. Now, is the teaching pedagogy of this AI, is that, is that in any way different than what, what is taught in schools? You know, how, how does it utilize technology differently than a school might? Because at school you have um, a set of goals that 
need to be achieved by everyone in class. Mm. Uh, a teacher cannot uh, personalize the way that they teach what they teach, either it's mm. math it's or English. It's supposed to, but it's quite difficult. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's hard, you yeah. know, to, to target everyone. Mm -hmm. So with, with our technology and the content that we're offering, we're actually giving a personalized uh, way to teach those subjects. Um, and today, um, even at school, they are watching videos. Right. But then afterwards, you know, the materials that test whatever they did understand uh, from those videos is very old-based uh, mm -hmm. knowledge, you know, like sure. papers. So these are the same questions that everybody are getting. And it's, it's very hard to, right. to catch, you know, what, what each child actually understood and got from each video. So th that system actually offers us um, the ability to see, you know, what the children understood from the videos based on the yeah. games and their achievements in the games? Yeah, I was just going to ask, I mean, this platform, it must, it must keep some sort of data on, on all of the users. So what, what have you learned about kids and learning and et cetera? It's big data analysis. So we do understand that, you know, that there is a curve of learning between the ages of three to, to eight, which we checked. And what we've learned is that there is a big difference, you know, between two children at the same, mm. ha at the same building um, right. that are at the same age. So each of them needs actually to get Amazing. different content and different uh, types of um, practicing. Right. Okay, so my last question, uh, real quick, you know, where is it available? It is available right now on our website at www.apluskids.co.il. And at the end of December, it's going to be available on all the digital stores through Grow Smart. In Hebrew, it's called Ligdol Chacham. Sure. All right. Well, uh, Galia Halawi from A Plus Kids, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. All right. Now, a new Israeli virtual reality camera has just gone where no VR camera has gone before, outer space. The cutting edge views camera developed here in Israel has just been launched into orbit to help film a National Geographic documentary for the Oscar nominated Jewish filmmaker. Darren Aronofsky. This incredible new camera offers high-resolution 3D images tailored for an immersive virtual reality experience. This model, called the Views, has actually been augmented specifically for deep space travel and use, a difficult task that took Israel's humanized company several years of trial and error. We are still in the early days of the VR market, but now that National Geographic has teamed with Oscar-nominated director Darren Aronofsky for a VR film shot in space, that may be about to change. Right now, the Views is aboard the International Space Station in the hands of Italian astronaut Paolo Nespoli, capturing a glimpse of life in space like the world's never seen before. The footage will then be used for Aronofsky's forthcoming documentary, titled One Strange Rock. And with a price tag of only 800 bucks, heck, maybe I'll buy my own Views camera and make my own virtual reality movie someday. The popular ride-sharing service known as Uber currently runs in an estimated 84 countries around the world. But an Israeli court has just ruled that Israel will officially not be one of them because Uber drivers aren't licensed to drive taxis and don't have the necessary insurances to cover their passengers. Local taxi unions and companies like Get Taxi have been petitioning the courts for a while now to ban Uber from the roads, and it looks like the courts have finally ruled in their favor. Uber is popular in over 600 cities globally, and because anyone with a car and a valid license can become an Uber driver and offer cheaper rides than most city taxis. But here in Israel, taxi drivers actually need to get a special license to provide taxi services, which is why when Uber first arrived, it massively cut into their business. Drivers for Get Taxi, for example, must similarly acquire proper licenses and insurance in order to do business as cabs. While other states have blocked Uber um, along similar lines, the company evades traditional laws by arguing that payment for Uber drivers is merely a reimbursement for their car maintenance. Uber regularly, Uber's regular taxi service, on the other hand, will be allowed to continue in Israel since it's both licensed and insured, like cabs, but on a whole, Uber must now desist the majority of its activity in the Holy Land. Israel's Hula Valley is one of the top birdwatching sites in the world, and that's because every day thousands of rare migratory birds make a temporary stop over there during their seasonal migration. Well, it turns out that Hula Lake is becoming a permanent home for some of the flocks because climate change is now making migration impossible for countless species of birds. Tourists here certainly don't seem to mind. Hula Lake is located on a major migrational path in the Great Rift Valley, which brings over half a billion birds through northern Israel every year. 
Hula Lake is actually one of the few spots on Earth where you can see some of these species all in one place too, including rare storks, cranes, pelicans, and even eagles and hawks. But experts are noticing that some of these birds are starting to make Israel their permanent home, and it's not necessarily a good thing. Dangerous climate change is pushing nearby desert climates to their limit, killing off food and water supplies. And many birds can no longer continue their migration journeys across the world. While Israeli tourists may be reaping the temporary benefits, local farmers and environmentalists have their eyes on far more dire consequences. It affects birds and mammals and insects and so on, so it can reduce the number of some species. It affects agriculture because many of these small birds, they go in the fields in Europe and they eat the insects which are making damage to the agriculture. If they are not there, they have to use more pesticides. You use more pesticide, you pay more money, and then we are only not only killing the bird, you are killing the people and destroying the soil and the water. Until I started working with ILTV, I never knew there was so much technology in the makeup business. Well, makeup is now going super high tech here in Israel, and it's all thanks to the Israeli company GG Cosmetics. Joining us now in the studio is brand ambassador Ivana Krugliak. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you so much for having me. All right, so tell, tell me about, about Gigi and kind of the history and, and what brings you in today. Well, Gigi is actually celebrating its 60th uh, anniversary this year, and for its 60th anniversary, it came out with this amazing 3D hailer, hyaluronic acid uh, filler, mm -hmm. uh, which really works wonders on the skin. It, it combines four international patents that wow. um, take the hyaluronic acid deep into the skin inside this little tiny molecule and it works on wrinkle reduction and it works on making the skin look plumper, more beautiful, younger looking skin. So, okay, so how is this different than other cosmetic products that are, you know, for the skin? Itself? Okay, the hyaluronic acid is actually, it's in our skin naturally, but as we age, we produce less and less hyaluronic acid. And what Gigi did was um, pack this hyaluronic acid inside this tiny molecule that penetrates inside, deep inside the layers of the skin. And mm. in that way, it helps the skin look younger because it um, absorbs moisture. The hyaluronic acid is a special acid that can absorb a lot of moisture. One gram can absorb up to six liters of water. Wow. So it's incredible. And your skin actually looks younger because the lines are less visible. It's plumpier, okay. it's softer, and um, you look younger. Wow. All right, so you know, what makes, how, first of all, how much does this product cost? This product costs 150 US dollars. Okay. Not very expensive. That's not, yeah, I was going to say, from what I, from the little I know about the makeup business, that's not, that's not bad. And, and you have to use it daily. I use it mm -hmm. daily. I'm, I'm, I'm a user of this mm -hmm. product, and it works wonders on me. I mean, my lines are less visible, and it actually it's good for prevention for women that are like 20 plus, and it's good for, um, for already visible lines for um, anti-aging treatments. And also for women that are doing hyaluronic injections, they can prolong the time between injection to, to between right. the injections and have longer uh, time with beautiful skin. Now you're saying injections. Is that does that have anything to do no. with Botox? It's not no. not remotely the same thing, or well, a GG does not work with injections, but the women that choose to go and mm -hmm. do at a dermatologist injections, they can use this to prolong the time between injection. Wow. between injections. This product uh, is actually part of a uh, ProMedic uh, GG line, which is um, developed especially to work with dermatologists and high-end clinics. All right, so my final question is, where is it available? Um, you can you can reach, uh, you can find this at your professional cosmetologist or professional uh, beauty therapist that that, that has it? That has it, yeah. <laughs> because right. it's, it's marketed well, through beauty therapists. All right, well, I'll just say then to everybody, make sure to keep your eye out for it because it sounds like an incredible product. Go ask your cosmetologist. Ask your cosmetologist. Happy 60th anniversary to thank Gigi. Thank you very much. And thank you so much for coming in, Ivana. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right, now it's time to swoon because Prince, Britain's Prince Harry is officially going to tie the knot with American actress Meghan Markle. The royal wedding has been set for spring of next year, but Israeli President Reuven Rivlin is already offering some expert advice on honeymoon destinations. President Rivlin has just sent the royal couple his Mazal Tov on behalf of Israelis everywhere, along with a personal invitation for them to honeymoon right here in Israel. 
Prince Harry of the British royal family was first introduced to Meghan Markle last year through mutual friends. And Cupid's arrow must have been sharp that night because a whirlwind romance followed almost immediately after. Fans all over the world have been adoring their relationship ever since, and now that they're tying the knot, everyone's looking forward to what's sure to be a wedding event of the year. Markle, a California-born actress best known for her role in the hit TV series Suits, will now become the first American to officially be given the title Her Royal Highness. 2.4 billion viewers tuned in for the last royal wedding for Prince William and Kate Middleton, but this wedding could very well shatter that record. It looks like another Israeli musician is now making major waves internationally, as Noga Erez's music has just been featured in an Apple Music advertisement. Check it out. The 27-year-old electronic artist emerged onto the scene back in 2016 with her first single, Dance While You Shoot, and today she's one of the strongest voices in electronic dance music scene worldwide. Apple certainly thinks so too, because the anthem that shot her to fame is the background on their latest Apple Music TV commercial. It's a big deal for a young musician who barely just finished studying musical composition at the Jerusalem Academy of Music a few years ago. For all you cinephiles out there interested in a sneak peek into what could potentially be next year's big film, you might want to come check out this year's Jerusalem Jewish Film Festival. LTV's Manuel Kadosh is here with the scoop. So Manuel, you know, what can we expect on this year's red carpet? Well, this will be the 19th year of the Jewish Film Festival held every year in the Holy Land um, in Jerusalem. The festival itself has been held annually since 1999, and this year's lineup will feature the best contemporary Jewish-themed films, including documentaries as well as shorts and restored classics from the Holy Land and from all over the world. The films all explore themes like Jewish faith and practice, culture, history, the Holocaust, and of course the role of Jewish identity in the state of Israel. Really fascinating topics that'll you know definitely keep you glued into your seat. So what films are in the lineup actually, you know, this year? Anything look especially good? There are a tons of awesome, tons of awesome films this year. For sure, the festival's um, opening film is Luca Guadagino's uh, Call Me By Your Name, which is an adaptation of a novel, a novel about a love affair between two young Jewish men in Italy during the 1980s. That film actually got rave reviews at Sundance, and people think it might be the frontrunner for the Oscars this year. Joe Wright's new film, Darkest Hour, will be the uh, festival's closing film this year. Darkest Hour also looks incredible. It stars uh, Gary Oldman as Winston Churchill during the time when Churchill was deciding on whether or not um, to negotiate with Hitler. And this year's Great Jewish Mind section will showcase movies about figures like Coco Chanel, uh, Leonard Cohen, Zach Posen, and many, many more. Wow. All right. All right. So all of those sound amazing. You know, can I, I, I for one, cannot wait to go down and check it out. I know. Yeah, definitely. You definitely have to go figure it out. You go check it out. I'll be there. It's starting on December 16th and wraps up on the 21st of the month. All right. So for those viewers spending their Hanukkah or Christmas breaks in the Holy Land, you know, better make sure to grab some tickets for the Jerusalem Definitely. Jewish Film Festival. Yes. <laughs> All right, thank you, Emmanuel. Thanks. Enroll in eTeacher's online Hebrew courses and quickly discover that it creates the deepest connection to Israel that you could ever imagine. Now it's time for our Hebrew word of the day. President Rivlin just sent a very special invitation to royal bride and groom-to-be, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. So, in honor of the lovely couple's nuptial news, today's Hebrew word is Yerach Dvash, which means honeymoon. Hebrew is usually a very poetic language that doesn't quite translate exactly from English. Not the case here. Combining the Hebrew word for moon, yareach, which with the Hebrew word for honey, or dvash, gives us yareach dvash, or literally a honeymoon. Now, President Rivlin personally just invited the royal couple to spend their upcoming yareach dvash here in Israel, which is not a bad idea. Though the prince could follow in his brother's footsteps too, Prince William had his yareach dvash with Cape Middleton on Seychelles Island off the East African coast. And you may not remember this, but their parents, Princess Diana and Prince Charles, had their Yerach Dvash on a private Mediterranean cruise. Maybe unfortunately for Charles, though, that Yerach Dvash was, according to Diana, merely a, quote, perfectly good opportunity to catch up on sleep. Ouch. A Yerach Dvash in Israel would certainly be way more fun. All right, now let's go ahead and look at the weather forecast. Tonight should be partly cloudy with scattered showers in select areas and a low of about 57 or 14 degrees Celsius. Tomorrow you can expect more chances for rain in the north and along the coast with little change in temperatures and a high of about 72 or 22 degrees Celsius. All right, that's it for today's news. Today's exchange rate is 3.5 shekels to the American dollar. 
Remember to sign up for our daily newsletter at ILTV.TV. I'm Aaron Porras, and thank you for watching.